to harm pre election. Yeah, good morning, my dear friends from media. Today, we have assembled here for an interesting uh, media interaction uh, with one of the finest film editors, Humphrey Dixon. Uh, as you all know, editing is a very important post-production process because when you are watching a movie, uh, the, when you find the movie riveting, and it's a edge of the seat action. I mean, that is when the role of the editor is so important and prominent. But I mean, it's also considered an invisible art because you watch a movie, you have a great experience, and you find that I mean, okay, yeah, I mean, this was this is what I mean I saw. Just recollect uh, maybe a chariot race of uh, Ben Hur. <laughs> some of the fighting sequences in uh, <coughs> Gladiator and many experimental movies as well where editing plays an important role in serving the finished product. So once it was said, said that I mean the job of an editor is to effectively reimagine and rewrite the film to produce a cohesive whole I mean which is so right. I mean it is a skill and a well-practiced art, and today, this also involves extensive use of digital technology. I have Mr. Humphrey Dixon with me. He is based in London, but works extensively in United States as well. And I mean, of course, he also has an India connection, having worked in Hyderabad, uh, and um, in, is closely associated with the Indian documentary and film movement. I mean, he began his career with the. Uh, Associated Redivision, the first commercial te television in, uh, in the United Kingdom. And he was the film editor for Merchant Ivory's film, The Autobiography of a Princess. Then he was nominated for the BAFTA Award for A Room with a View. And he possesses a, a vast experience in the field of film editing. And it's a craft which he has mastered, as a result of which he will be delivering a master class tomorrow at the McInnes Palace. Uh, it's over to you, Mr. Humphrey Dixon. I would request you to say a few, give your opening remarks, and after that we can just take a few questions okay. and answers. Right. Okay. So, I don't give too much away about the master class tomorrow, because that would not be the thing to do. But uh, I, I, I want to talk about my uh, background with the uh, with with India. I'm very, I feel very closely re related to India in terms of uh, my professional work, working with Ismail Merchant on four, four pictures associated with India, uh, Autobiography of a Princess, uh, Halabalu over Georgian Bonnie's Pictures, Heat and Dust, and less, uh, more recently, but not to do with Merchant Library, I worked on Azan uh, for Prashant Chadha, which was released, I think, about three or four years ago now. So uh, my ties are very close to your country, and I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to be here. Um, tomorrow I'll be talking about uh, those films, as well as many others that I've worked on since, and uh, discussing the, um, the, the, the change that, that had to be made. Most of my films, for instance, uh, that I've worked on have been traditionally cut on film, but I've been, I'll be talking about the changes from traditional film editing to digital editing which uh, not always an easy, an easy move. And um, it brought in all kinds of different um, aspects to work, to the work. I mean, to give you an example, in what I call the old days of traditional film editing, uh, if the director and producer would, um, would uh, want to change, uh, then it, uh, it would be something I'd, I'd do over the next day. I'd say, OK, come back tea time tomorrow. But nowadays, they'll be there in the cutting room looking over one shoulder and you'll be expected to do it on an instantaneous basis, which has brought in well, different cultural uh, feelings to the cutting room. The cutting room has changed massively since, those, uh, since that change. So that's, uh, that's the kind of thing I should be just talking about. And also, um, 
I understand that m the majority of the audience will be over uh, in the student area, so, uh, and obviously you can't talk about teach editing in the space of one and a half to two hours, but um, I will be talking about how it's not just about um, having a technique, having some technical knowledge, having a certain amount of creative skill, that's not what editing is all about. It's also about having to deal with working with directors in a small room. Directors usually have personalities, uh, uh, you know, and uh, egos as big as a skyscraper almost. So you have to learn to deal with those directors um, on a one-to-one -one basis which is obviously a challenge to, for a lot of people. It certainly was for me, and it, it will be for those that are coming up in the industry today. Nothing has changed in that regard. Directors are still uh, huge characters, uh, and editors have to be fairly large characters in order to, to help them and deal with them, and deal with the film. So, um, I don't know what else I can tell you about that. Um, Want some awesome questions? Yeah. Would you like to share your? See, you said that. I mean, we were just when we were speaking, you just mentioned that about a, half of your work has been on a film, right. film editing, and now I mean that with the advent of uh, digital technology. Yeah. How how do you think that uh, with the advent of digital technology, the techniques as well as the scope of an editor has changed? Well, it's the, it's still the same. It's still narrative. It's still talking. It's it's still dealing with uh, a story and telling a story. And that hasn't changed, thank goodness. But uh, the aspects of it connected with it are, are wide world. You know, they're, they're, they're huge. They're life changing in terms of uh, cutting room um, activities and the process involved. Uh, do you think that I mean, if, though the input has changed, though the output has not changed, output remains the same. It does. In terms of input, like I mean, has digital technology eased the Yes, I mean the the Avid uh, and the Lightworks and the and, uh, Final Cut Pro. They're wonderful machines, particularly the Avid, which is something that I've ad ad adopted. Um, beautiful, wonderful machines designed by people who clearly know what editing is all about. And um, and uh, I, you know, it's it's a wonderful thing. Uh, but it is the fact that people who are looking over your shoulders, sometimes producers, they see a keyboard and everyone can operate a keyboard nowadays, they think that everyone can do it, but they can't. Believe me, they can't do it. Uh, it needs a, a great deal of experience uh, to, in order to sit back and watch a film grow in front of your eyes and see the big picture and see what is wrong with it. You can, it's easier to look at one scene and say why, why it works, why it doesn't work. Um, uh, but to look back at the whole film uh, for a two hour long film and, and, and analyze exactly what is wrong with it and what has to be removed or what has to be added. That is, that takes years in my opinion. What, what, what an average film takes, how much time it takes to edit an average 120, 140 minute film? Well, uh, usually I, I'm hired uh, at the beginning of the shoot. So I have the, the, that time to put uh, my cut together, the editor's cut. So you have a planning ahead time with you. Exactly. And by the end of the shoot, I'll probably need a week or two to tidy it up, maybe add some temporary music and the like. And then the director is uh, brought in, uh, usually it takes a break after the shoot. Uh, it depends on the budget. Sometimes six weeks, sometimes two months, in order to get a fine cut, a lock off. Can we open for discussions, please? Absolutely. Some questions, please? Yeah. Uh, any questions from the press, please? You might have done a manual editing. Traditional way of editing, manual, manually. Yes. You might have done that also, and now you're uh, uh, with uh, digital yes. uh, format. Uh, so, which, uh, according to you, uh, which you like, enjoyed the most, or which you liked the most, or which, which was more uh, challenging? Um, I, I love editing on film. I love it. I, I love it uh, for so many reasons. I mean, it's not such an isolated life as it is now. Now we're locked up in little air-conditioned rooms. 
then we had larger rooms. They had to be large because they had to accommodate yeah. all the film all over the place. And then we had our assistants, um, maybe um, sometimes up to four or five assistants in an in adjoining room. Uh, that was terrific, uh, not only just uh, in terms of uh, uh, a more social life, uh, you know, uh, whereas today it's so insulated, you're there, uh, your assistant may be on a second floor uh, um, of a sec another building that connected, you know, by wire, obviously. Uh, you, you often don't even meet him, you know. He's a technician, whereas uh, assistants uh, during in traditional film, traditional film editing, for a start, they got a chance to get a training, which is important. Uh, where are the new editors going to come from? Because there is no basic training now. Our assistants are detached from the editing process. They, they're, they're, they're not the people who are standing over your shoulder. Now the people who are standing over your shoulder are the producers. So that is, that's, that's a tricky one. That can be tricky. Uh, to, to, in my point of view, from my point of view, um, uh, directors should control the, uh, the creative side of uh, editing, the, cre the creative side of filmmaking. Uh, but that is becoming less and less the case. Producers are getting more and more involved. And there are so many more producers now because uh, financing films is complex and sometimes they have to come in from all kinds of areas. You could have maybe six, seven, eight producers and they all want their say. Now, they all want to come to the cutting room and they want to have their say. It's a bit like how commercials used to be made. You know, the client comes in and the client has, has his directors and sub-directors. They all want to have an effect uh, on, on the commercial. It didn't used to be like that. It really didn't used to be like that on film. So that is a, a major problem for me. Long-winded answer, but thanks for the question. Yeah. Would you like to comment on the contemporary editing techniques which you you are presently using? Uh, and, well, uh, you mean um, like my the no, in terms of what kind of a editing uh, editing technique you prefer? Well, um, disruptive. You mentioned you mentioned um, uh, in your uh, earlier moment about. Um, uh, editors have, having, uh, they have to be invisible, the, the cuts have to be invisible, at least that is one approach, it's a seamless approach, and um, uh, I think... Uh, so you believe in the continuity editing school? Well, well yes and no, I mean, uh, I, I think you have to move with audience sophistication, sophistication. I think audience uh, getting, are getting used to uh, a, a different, I mean there was a time when a, uh, in the scene you might have a car would drive up um, to a house, uh, the, uh, the driver would get out, walk along, uh, cut, uh, knock on the door, the door would open, and you'd have to cover that whole thing. Nowadays a car drops, uh, pulls up, you cut in interior, the door opens. It's more like a com commercial Absolutely. advertisement. And, and, uh, yeah, and, and it's great, and, and it works, and yeah, it works. audiences are used to it, and so you must go along with it. And, and it helps in terms of, um, uh, you know, people are impatient. They want to move on. They want to, uh, they, they don't want to sit around and watch you know, spring turn into summer. That's, that's the way it is now, and I approve of it, and I think it's the way to go. Any memorable challenges you encountered in, in maybe giving the final touches to a film, making it more spiced up? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, um, there's, the, there's the, the thing about coming to the end of a film, coming to a lock-off time. You can go on. You can go on and on. You know, someone has to say, okay, enough, stop. You can go on fiddling. And the directors are always uh, keen to fiddle away and adjust the cuts right up to the last moment, right in through the dub. That, that's another thing that is happening now and didn't used to happen with film. Whereas you had a lock-off moment, and the, the whole film was locked, you went into the sound studio and you mixed the tracks and the film was neck cut and distributed. Now, uh, l there's no such thing as a lock off. Uh, films, can be, uh, th films can be locked off at the very last moment, on the last day of the mix. And, and especially at times when they have worldwide releases, it makes life uh, absolute hell for, for everybody involved with the distribution. And territories get lost. Uh, you know, there are times when there's a worldwide release and 
because of those last minute changes, territories get lost. So, empty screens in some parts of the world. It does happen. It happens all the time. Any questions, please? Which was your most memorable uh, movie speak editing in linear and non linear? Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, please speak into the mic. Which was your most memorable uh, movie that you have edited in linear and non linear? In both the ways. Um, well, um, I guess uh, the challenges, the films that challenged me most were the ones that I found most interesting. I mean, I, I worked on a film um, for John Jacques Arnaud uh, called Enemy at the Gates, which was the, uh, the, the battle between the Russians and the Germans in the Second World War, at Stalingrad. And uh, we had um, a huge amount of footage coming in. That, fortunately, was done um, on um, uh, digital. So uh, how we would have got that through that, working on film, we would have done it. But it, it was a, a very, uh, you know, time-consuming process. And then I guess the first digital film I, I e ever edited, which was a film, an Irish film called um, Lost of the High Kings, that was the most challenging in that I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, you know, and I had someone with me in the morning telling me which buttons to push and how to do this and how to achieve that. But she would only work in the mornings. Then she'd have her lunch and disappear. Nothing would work. Any, anything I wanted to do, it just wouldn't work. So yeah, that was uh, that was difficult. Sure. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, my question is that I, I have missed the initial part of your briefing. I just want to know how you find editing in India. Uh, well, I, I haven't actually edited in India. Uh, I, did, I came to Hyderabad on Heat and Dust in order to edit the film as it went along, but for whatever reason, the equipment could not be got to us in, in, in time. But, um, but, so that film ended up being edited in New York. Uh, how about uh, Indian editors? What about them? Yeah, how how you find them? Oh, uh, I, well, uh, on uh, Azan, for instance, which was, when it, get, when it get, came to me, it was already partially put together by uh, an Indian editor, and uh, uh, extremely good job. I have uh, had no problem with it whatsoever. It needed tweaking, but that was just my point of view. Uh, you know, we always love to tweak. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I, think, uh, I think the Indian industry is, is becoming, I think uh, it, it's expanding and it's going absolutely in the right direction. I just kind of wish that Indian films uh, would have a, w a wider worldwide market, and I think a few there is a couple of adjustments that have to be that we will in the worldwide market we can't have in intervals inter interludes, you know that's not going to work, and uh, even if you cut the the, inter the interval out, there's still going to be a loose area where the interval once was, and and. Uh, People breaking into song, that's not going to really work generally, I don't think, on a worldwide market. But uh, I think it's a, a huge market for Indian drums out so there. Any other suggestions would you like to give from the perspective of an editor to make the Indian films for the worldwide market? Um, well, I, no, I don't think it's from the I don't think it's from the editor's point of view. It has to come from the, uh, the soul of the, uh, the filmmakers, the director, for instance. I think it has to come from there. And then once, uh, I mean, there is the, or with Azan, for instance, I, I suggested that we have a version a, a, that would be distributed outside of India, uh, that would be more international. Um, but that, um, that suggestion died, I'm afraid. Oh. <laughs> what are the challenges in the editing of 3D films? How they are different from regular films? Which ones? 3D films. 3D? 3D, yeah. 3D films. Um, I, I've never edited a 3D film, so I really can't answer that question. But I imagine the, that the, there are many differences. I mean, a film has got to tell a story. If it's on 3D, fine. I don't think there should be any difference. Yeah, you were just. Please pass the mic here. Hi, this is Seth from Prime Media. Okay. Being a video editor myself, I'd right. like to ask you, what are the three basic things on that a video editor needs to keep in mind to excel his idea with where it can 
match with the director or with, the, with your client? This is a terrific trade and craft question. <laughs> <laughs> the three, three of them, just three of them. I'll give you a, a, a more than that, but um, the three most important things, I think, first of all, whether it, if it's a documentary, if, it, if it's a drama, it doesn't matter. It has to be about storytelling. So that's number one. It's about narrative. Uh, and that's what, what it must almost be, uh, be in the forefront of the editor's mind. Um, uh, getting on with the director is number two, is uh, ultra important. Uh, uh, and in order to do that, you have to, you have to be on the same wavelength. And that often isn't the case. Um, you know, directors and people are different, obviously, and people have different views. Um, I think directors lean towards indulgence. Uh, they love every, every frame. And editors often need to, to, to get over that, have them get over that. So that, that's a tricky one. Um, and um, finally, I, I, I guess, uh, bearing in mind the sound, I mean, people think, uh, editors sometimes think, okay, we get to the end of the, uh, the mix, and a, a sequence that may not work awfully well, it'll be fixed in sound, or the music will fix it. It never is the case. It always has to work without particular sound effects, without music, on film, just picture-wise, before it gets to the next stage. Do you have any experience where you have clashed with your ideas compared to your director's oh, ideas? Oh. Which one do you like or your director's Look, pl made? Please speak in mic because I mean, we have what a YouTube yeah. recording of the entire press conference. So in your experience, you have any experience where your ideas have clashed with the director's idea, where you think that this is a right shot or right way of editing, where your director did not like? Yes. Uh, um, pretty well on ev every film you, you come, uh, you have an area where you, the, uh, you don't agree. I mean, the classic one with James Ivory <coughs> is, is, uh, is that uh, I was con constantly uh, trying to uh, keep things tight, keep things taut. Um, and um, uh, and he used to joke about it, that, that I would always do this. And he had, um, for instance, when he was talking about some of his classic films like the Europeans, the period pieces, he would say that he would rather wait for the sun to come round and catch the light in the lace cap before it, it cutting the scene. You know, that long the, drone sequences. Yeah, long, long, long drone sequences. Yeah. But, uh, however, uh, at, w before we started Room with a View, he said to me, um, and as opposed to his previous, much, somewhat longer films, he said to me, listen, Humphrey, I, I, I really want this film to be tight. And I said, well, great, it's going to be a success then. <laughs> and, you know, and it was tight. It was, I think, just over 90 minutes. And, and yeah. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm from the international programming team here. And, uh, but I also happen to be a film student. So I was wondering, um, because when you said uh, how editing today is more of an isolated process. Yeah. So I, I was also wondering because we're con like currently we're stuck in this entire catastrophe of this great leap transition from film. This also parallelly a transition from a certain art of editing to a certain technology of editing. Is, right. Would you like to comment on that? Is, is there also an aesthetic shift from an from an artistic uh, process to more of a technological process? Um, I, I think, there, yes, there is a shift. Uh, I, I think you have to get to grips as a student. And it is a major concern. I, do, I teach at the National Film School as a visiting tutor in London, which is a great school. Uh, and so I, I, I have to uh, uh, come across students all the time. And things are not easy for them right now, although the whole business is, is uh, expanding um, everywhere. Uh, students have a tough time of it, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the whole apprenticeship deal for uh, assistance is, has, is disappearing because of digital. But uh, in, uh, to answer your question directly, uh, yes, that whole artistic thing is there, but it has to come in a bit later. Technically, you've got to get to grips with it. You've got to get to grips with um, with the equipment you're working with, or whatever level they are, whether it's film or, or digital, you've got to get to grips with that. And having got to grips with that, then you can take an overview, and bearing in mind the narrative, 
the ever important narrative, then that artistic view, how can you s spice it up, can come in. Can you want a supplementary? Yeah, please. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. It's, it's not uh, like uh, related to my previous question. I was just wondering because uh, Indian cinema is often looked down upon because it's melodramatic and because there are too many songs in our movies. Yeah. But I also know that it's slightly, I don't know, because asking around, it's slightly difficult to edit a movie with so many songs. So what are your comments on that? Like, if you're uh, with any direct experience of editing a musical in Hollywood, like, uh, what, what are the, what is the basic setup of editing a musical or editing a film with songs? Is, is it difficult? Um, well, it's, 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 I'm not going to say it's easy, but, but, um, uh, I mean, I worked on a film on Led Zeppelin. I'm, I do hope you've heard of Led Zeppelin. It's a, they're a, it's a pop group, <laughs> westernized pop group, no longer uh, in action anymore. Called Song Remains the Same. The same. And I worked, uh, I worked on that. Uh, and that was basically a Madison Square Gardens, three camera setup, three or four camera setup, and then little skitty bits that would would go into that uh, to um, to kind of expanded but um i haven't ha i haven't done a, a musical as such i must say although i worked on the Ro roseland film which is about the roseland dance or music everywhere um and and um but i can't say i worked on musical but i love musicals the carousel for instance rogers and hammerstein carousel one of my favorite films and still to this day i love it so um um but um, I, I think things will change in terms of Bollywood and the export of their, of their films to the world. Uh, I, I think it has to change. Well, you can still have a domestic market and an international market. You can still work in tandem like that. But um, I, I, for instance, I love Bollywood films, some of them. I think they're terrific. There's something really spe special about them. So, and, and I think they'll go on forever. Because clearly there's a market for them. People love them over here. So, you know. It's just difficult to make the journey. Yeah, I'm sorry, I couldn't stop. Because currently, the only space which Bollywood seems to have captured is the Broadway space. Right. Abroad. So the Broadway is going big on Bollywood. So hopefully, so you're suggesting there might be a certain shift of the entire Bollywood mechanism in, in the future. In the I, th I think it's about things mature forward. all the time, don't they? Things move on. You know, people uh, have, uh, just as I was talking about the technique of editing, how it's moved on. I'm sure. Uh, as uh, you absorb more international films into the, this country, then the, the international community will absorb yours too, and there'll be a kind of you know crossover. And I, I think that's healthy. I really do. Um. Thank you very much, Mr. Humphrey Dixon. I mean, for your okay. time. I think okay. I mean we began slowly, but the discussions picked up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for it. And uh, Mr. Humphrey Dixon will be delivering the master class tomorrow at uh, McKinney's Palace 2. Uh, McKinney's Palace 1, I believe. Uh, all those, I mean, tell your friends, I mean, if you are interested, I mean, there will be a, he'll, I mean, he'll be, of course, uh, talking about editing in a more elaborate manner. I